Hey everyone from the Webflow community and welcome back to another Flow Ninja video. In this video, we're going to be going over the next part and that is usability and design of our Flow Ninja checklist. So, uh, in order to have our website usable for every single one of our visitors and make sure that everything is as in Figma, we're going to be following a set of kind of pre-checks checklists that we need to check for every single one of our pages or every single one of the websites we're building, migrating or anything on that sort. So uh, the first thing we're going to be going over is making sure that all of our links, uh, elements or anything linking to a page has a hover state added to the website. So we're just going to check our websites just kind of as a quick reference. So hovering Let's Talk is going to have an interaction. Webflow templates is going to have an interaction. Navigation items are going to have some sort of an, of an interaction. Kind of drop downs, nav buttons. Um, here, kind of the links for our work. Every single one of those items is going to have a hover state. But then also on the other front, kind of if you have an element that is actually not linking to somewhere, please do not add a hover state. So this is just gonna make sure that our website is more accessible for visitors and uh, kind of a lot nicer also to browse through. Then uh, linking pages, we like making sure, like especially when migrating websites, that every single one of the pages that needs to be uh, linked is actually linked in the navigation and the footer. Sometimes we can see maybe in the designs that designers forget to add the, the link to a page that is important to the navigation or to the footer. So just double check all the pages you actually have on the website and make sure that they are linked in the footer or the navigation, except of course, if the client is specifically saying, okay, these are our marketing pages. So we do not want them to be linked. Um, then um, interaction speed. Um, on that front, uh, we like um, having interactions on the website that adds to the experience, but don't actually make you wait for everything to load. So in this case, if you have something scrolling in, please don't uh, make the scrolling that long that people are actually going to need to wait for that to happen before they can consume the content. So always try adjusting the speed of the interaction so it's not interfering with the, the way uh, visitors are actually visiting the website itself. Um, then interactions for tabs, dropdowns, and sliders. We can even showcase that here. So like for dropdowns, make sure that when you open up the dropdown that you add a custom interaction. Same for tabs, like when content is switching or for sliders or anything on that front. We can do some pretty advanced things li like just with Webflow interactions, which is gonna make our website that much better to, to, to visit and that, that much more professional. Uh, then uh, the navigation, again, we can show that here should be sticky on the website. We, we, we have a custom interaction like a flow becoming ninja. So uh, basically here, and then also making sure that it doesn't blend in with the background color. So in our case, we added a shadow, but maybe you can add a color that is never gonna be used as a background color in a section or something similar on that front. Um, then um, something unique we do on our side is for tablet and mobile. We like removing the hover states on tablet and mobile. So you can see our button doesn't actually have a hover state on uh, on tablet. And that's how we like uh, keeping it for tablet and mobile devices. So you don't have maybe pressing the button and then it has hovering or you just have a strange th the thing where uh, that kind of hover state stays. So we just like removing all, any sort of hovers for tablet and mobile devices. Uh, then. We do have a QA team in our kind of in our agency at Flow Ninja that is actually QAing even after our devs go through this checklist, go with their own checklist for QAing the website on their side. Uh, but this is gonna make their job a lot easier in making sure that everything on the website is actually the same as in Figma. So just go ahead and double check all the spacings, font sizes, uh, kind of breakpoints, or anything on that side to make the QA process later on easier and just to have like an, um, a one-to-one -one experience from Figma to Webflow. Uh, then the next thing is missing content. Uh, we like having the responsibility on, kind of on our team members in checking like as they're developing, does everything uh, copy-wise make sense? Sometimes, especially when designing or migrating big websites, uh, kind of people can forget to add some of the pretty important uh, parts of the website to the co I mean, copy-wise. So just make sure that if you see lorem ipsum, you see some text that actually doesn't make sense to have there or a logo of a company that doesn't make sense to be there or whatever. Um, just report that either to the client or just report it in our project management tool so we can uh, be sure that we have that blocker before we can launch and see the best way in order to fix that and have real content on the website in the end. The next thing is blurry images. So sometimes Webflow when adding custom interactions like blur, can uh, can be strange in a sense that kind of images can become blurry. 
So by pressing Command Shift O on your keyboard, you're going to be able to turn off responsive images in the cases where you do have those interactions that make the images blurry. Or just make sure that you actually export images from Figma in the proper way, that images are high quality, and that because of that, you're going to have a nicer uh, experience and no blurry images on the website itself. Image height, uh, this can cause some problems on Safari. So it's just a simple thing that you make sure that if you're setting image height to be 100%, that the parent element on top is having a fixed uh, height, or in the ideal scenario that the image itself has a fixed height, so that it's not gonna be stretching uh, in the grid uh, like uh, on Safari or, or kind of some different browsers that can have that problem happening. Then for the navigation scroll, uh, we like, I mean, in Flow Starter, you have the code for uh, disabling scrolling on mobile devices. So basically when the navigation is open, we like you can scroll the page here, but you, when you open the navigation, you should not be able to scroll the page. And then also uh, that is the first thing. And then the nav menu scroll is, for example, if the content on the screen here cannot fit into your screen, you need a way to easily scroll up and down inside of the navigation to make sure that you can actually consume all of the links even on smaller devices. Image plus text, this is just a fallback item we like having is like when you're breaking images and texts, we always show the image first and then the text so that you can have, a, let's say, a, a, a nice, uh, nice design pattern across the website where you're always showing first the images and then the texts. Um, then a pretty straightforward one, just make sure that the website doesn't have horizontal scroll. We've, si we've seen so many websites on the web that have those tiny scroll bars left and right that can, that can occur, uh, which is making your website not so professional. So yeah, just make sure that um, in any case, it's probably something super straightforward that you don't have that happening. And then as a final thing is actually checking your website on as many devices as you can, but real devices. So checking in browser for mobile phones can be good, but actually checking on mobile Safari on Android phones or kind of different size of, sizes of phones can kind of discover a lot more problems than you've actually kind of expected. So we don't want our users to actually report those to the client. So just make sure to test on as many devices as, can, as you can on bigger screens, on Windows laptops, on Mac laptops, and just have a handy of uh, different devices to test from. So, that concludes our video for usability um, and design for Webflow. And in the next uh, part, we're going to be going over search, search engine optimization and some of the things you can do for search engine optimization in the end. So uh, thank you so much and talk to you soon.